Let's turn today to John's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 1. Jesus is continuing to speak to the Pharisees who were questioning him about the healing of the man born blind that we considered in our last two studies in John chapter 9. And here in chapter 10, verse 1, Jesus says to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now here Jesus speaks of himself as a shepherd, and he also speaks of himself as the door. I am the door, he says in John 10, verse 9. And then in verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. He is the shepherd and the door. And he says here, if you don't enter by the door into the fold, but climb up some other way, you're a thief and a robber. You cannot enter the fold of God except through the door. That is Jesus himself. I cannot come to the Father except through Christ. He is the only door to the Father. There is no other door other than Him. And when we come through Him, we can be saved. John 10, 9, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved. But if you try to get into God's kingdom apart from Christ, through your good works perhaps, through giving money to the poor, through doing a lot of good things on earth, these are all trying to climb in some other way. They may look like good ways, but it's some other way. Jesus said, I am the way. He is the way, he is the door, and that's the only way to enter into the Father's presence. That's a very humbling thing, because many of us like to get some credit for our salvation. And that's why people don't come to receive the simple message of the gospel, right? God says, you can never do anything to make yourself good enough before me. First of all, you have to come with empty hands and say you're good for nothing, rotten, and rotten to the core, and that Jesus has to forgive you. When you come through the door like that and accept the death of Jesus on Calvary's cross for your sins, you can enter in and have fellowship with the Father. Ask Jesus to forgive you because he died for you. And say, Lord, I want to come to the Father through Jesus Christ. Call upon his name. Call upon the name of Jesus. And you can be saved. Come through that door. There is no other way. You can't come in to God's kingdom by saying you were born in a Christian family or you got baptized or you got confirmed or, or you did 10,000 other things. Those are all another way. You're a thief and a robber. That's a pretty strong word for Jesus to use. You're a thief and a robber trying to get him some other way. Come through the door. And when you come through the door, the doorkeeper will open to you. The doors of God's kingdom will be open to you to come right in. And that is also the door of the church, to change the illustration. For the church is also part of God's kingdom. The right way to come into the church and be a part of it is through Jesus Christ. He's the door to the church. And we can think of the church as part of God's kingdom. Jesus is the door to the church and the doorkeeper opens the door to the shepherd. Christ has got right to come to the church and to call his sheep out by name. And it says here, they will not follow a stranger, verse 5. The doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Jesus is our shepherd. Once we have come into the fold through the door, through him as a door, then he leads us out to, not into the world, but to be his witnesses in the world. But he's the one who leads us out. We go with him. We don't go alone. And then he goes on to say in verse 4, when he puts forth all his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. And a stranger, they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This is a wonderful thing that happens to us when we receive the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2.27 says, you have an anointing of the Holy Spirit that teaches you all things. In other words, when you 
are really anointed by the Holy Spirit and you listen to somebody, even though it sounds right, if you feel uneasy in your spirit. Listen to that voice. That uneasiness in your spirit means that that person who is speaking, there's something wrong with that person. Even though you may not be able to pin it down. You can be a young believer and detect someone who is trying to lead you astray from Christ to himself perhaps, to some cultistic teaching, to some wrong doctrine. The Holy Spirit will warn you, that's a stranger's voice. That's not the voice of Christ. That's not the voice of God. A stranger they will not follow. They will flee from strangers. Do you flee from strangers? Do you flee from those who are not seeking to lead you to Christ? This figure of speech, Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things were which he had been saying to them. And even today people can't understand. But it is so clear to us. Then Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, and the sheep did not hear them. All the people who came right up to that time, 1900 years ago, 1900 and more years ago, when Jesus was on the earth, every single person who came before that, Jesus said they were thieves and robbers. If they tried to tell you that they were God's representatives. He's not talking about the Old Testament prophets now. He's talking about those who said that they were the way to God. There was no way to God till Jesus came. He said, I am the door. Anyone else who came before me and said that he's the door to God was a thief and a robber. And anyone who's come after that in these 1900 years and said that he's the door to God is a thief and a robber. It's a strong word. But that's what Jesus said. And the sheep did not hear them. Those who really belong to God will never be led astray by all these false teachers. Let the world be filled with false teachers. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Ordinary sheep, you know, a dog can recognize his master's voice. How much more a child of God will be able to recognize the voice of God. When we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit tells us. Very often, what happens to many believers is, they receive the Holy Spirit, and they're very sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit in the beginning, but after some time, they become careless in their conscience, and they become deaf gradually. In Hebrews chapter 5, Paul speaks to some people in verse 11, says, you have become dull of hearing. You have become dull of hearing. You were not like that in the beginning. In the beginning you could hear clearly, but now you've become dull of hearing. So the Lord seeks to save us from that. Be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit when you receive Him. And the little thing, apologize where you need to apologize. Go and set things right where you need to set things right. And then Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved. And after he's saved, he's coming to the fold of God. What happens? He's a part of the church now. He goes in and out of that door. And he finds pasture. What does it mean to go in and out? To go in is to go into the presence of God and to live before him, to worship him, to obey him, to listen to him, to hear what he has to say. But that's not enough. We're not to be monks just sitting in God's presence all the time. No. Where to go out? Out where? Right out into the world to be his witnesses. To share with others, to share with other believers, encourage them, strengthen them, build them up. We must go in and out, and we'll find pasture when we go in, and we'll find pasture when we go out. Because the Lord is our shepherd. He leads us beside the still waters. He makes us lie down beside the still waters. He leads us in paths of righteousness, into the green pastures. But he says in contrast to the shepherd, the thief, that's the devil. He comes only to steal. That's clear. What does the devil come for? He comes to steal your joy. He comes to steal your peace, steal your purity, steal your righteousness. And then finally, after he's stolen it, to kill you and to destroy you. And it's amazing how many people are deceived by this thief. Jesus said, on contrast, I came not only to give you life, but that you might have life abundantly, overflowing like rivers of living water. Jesus came to fill us with the Holy Spirit. It's not enough to have life. You think of a sick person lying in a hospital, barely able to get out of bed, barely able to move in that bed. You can say he's got life, but he needs two people to hold him, even to stand up. You can't say he's got abundant life. There are a lot of believers like that. They're like sick people in a sick bed, barely able to move. They always need to be propped up by other believers, holding them up, encouraging them, 
lifting them up even after so many years. They don't have abundant life. They can't, you can't say rivers of living water are flowing out from them. Why? They have opened their life to the thief who has stolen something in their life. Now set it right. Come to Jesus and say, Lord, I want this abundant life, this fullness of the Holy Spirit, this rivers of living water that makes me a blessing to other people around me, in my home and in my locality. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for a sheep. Here's the difference between a good shepherd and a hireling. The hireling, who is not the owner of the sheep, beholds the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hireling and he's not concerned about the sheep. The difference between a shepherd and a hireling is the hireling is concerned about himself. The shepherd is concerned about his sheep. Jesus laid down his life so that the sheep might be protected. A hireling runs away. We can apply that to the church. Who is a true elder, a true shepherd of the sheep? The one who does not seek his own. The one who lays down his life for the sheep, who is concerned about the spiritual development of the sheep. Who is a hireling? The one who gets paid and who is interested in his salary, who will go where he gets the maximum salary, who visits the homes where he gets the biggest gifts, and who is interested in his own things and his own profit and his own gain and who is not protecting the sheep from the wolves, who will not rebuke sin. Those are the hirelings of them, multitudes of them. May God raise up in our churches many more true shepherds.